All right, thank you, Maddie, for that wonderful introduction. If just uh, real quick, I could get a nice round of applause for Apothecary Coffee. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but uh, really moving heaven and earth to get this joint off the ground. I'm so excited to be here. It's the first comedy act uh, so far. It's just been live music. It's not really my thing, so. Whatever, it's great to meet you. Uh, I also love the variety of costumes we have. I love a lot of people that you went as normal people, but you all did your own like spin on it. And that I think is really great. Speaking of variety, I myself, uh, you know, consider myself a big Halloween fan. I didn't dress up just for the raffle, even though the raffle's pretty good. I'm not sure if you guys read the posts, but I just love Halloween. So whether you're here because you love Halloween or you want to win the raffle, I'm glad you're here. So uh, obviously I am dressed up as a police officer. Uh, ladies love a man in uniform, so that's why this is my fallback costume. Uh, whenever I can't think of anything to be, I throw this on and there's pros and cons to it. And I'm going to dive into that. So pros. Uh, I wore this costume for the first time. I was a freshman at Central Michigan, if any of you are familiar. And, oh yeah, you can cheer for that. No, you can cheer for that. Absolutely. It's a great school. Great school. Fire chips, absolutely. And I was kind of rude about it because I walked through the dorm in full costume and like would knock on doors and you know, be like... What's going on in there? You guys, know, so everything doing all right? And people are over like Drake, like this is not the time to be doing this. People are actually, you know, possibly committing crime, and you're bothering us by doing that. I'm like, okay, whatever. But it was fun, you know. It was like the fake authority that comes with a fake badge. It's like having a real one. You just you have this sense of entitlement, and you just get to walk around like you're better than them. Now, with that also comes the bad parts of being a police officer. When you are just not impersonating one, you're just being one for Halloween, there's a huge difference. One is a felony, the other one is just you having a good time uh, you know, in October. So again, I returned to Central Michigan uh, the year after to visit, threw the costume on again, and I remember me and my friends were walking like past the bus stop, and this guy stops, and he goes, are you a cop? And I'm like, okay, this guy's obviously messing with me. You know, like, you can tell this is not a police officer uniform. I'm like, looks like it. No, I am not a cop. And he goes, so why'd you dress up this morning? At this point, I'm a little spooked. I'm like, okay, uh, well, buddy, it's Halloween, in case you didn't know. And he's like, yeah, I get it, but, like, why a cop? Like, do you think that's funny? And I'm like, all right, man, listen, I didn't mean to offend you. I just, you know, this is a costume. Man. And he goes, it doesn't offend me, bro. I don't like it. And now in my brain, I'm thinking, what's the difference between not liking something and offending you? And at this point, I'm just, it's like a flight or fight. And I don't have a gun. I don't have a flashlight. My, you know, the fake handcuffs are broken. I'm pretty much, if they did in fact, defund the police. I'm a defunded police officer. This man wants to literally beat my rear because I'm dressed as one. So I just go, listen man, I don't know what you want from me, and we just left and diffused it that way. So I think I did a better job of diffusing the situation than most police officers would, but you know, that's just the way it was for me. You know, this costume is great. I love Halloween. And the thing is, You'd think like that's a pretty bad Halloween, like an encounter where a random stranger wants to just kick my teeth in because of my costume choice. And I wouldn't even say it's like a bad costume. Like, there are bad costumes. I don't have to tell you what you guys can and can't wear for Halloween, but I did not think this was one of them. Apparently it was. My worst Halloween, however, I say Halloween 2020. Um, if any of you blocked it out of your memory or were living under a rock for the past couple of years, 2020 was great because COVID happened and there was a lockdown. 
and all that was really sick. I loved every bit of it. I played so much Animal Crossing that amounted to nothing. <laughs> and I lost my tolerance for alcohol. I lost what little social skills I had already. And you know, there was like, you know, everyone was on the fence. It's like, oh, Halloween, like the big first holiday since lockdown. What do we do? Should I go out? Am I supposed to wear a mask? Should I stay in? Like, should we not do anything? I would just like to give a huge shout out to everyone that was a doctor or nurse for Halloween that year. They got the mask built in and they didn't have to have any politics. It was like, it's a costume, sorry. That's it. They didn't have to say anything besides that. I went as a burglar. Uh, not a cool one, not like a hamburger, just like a normal one because it was another like thrown together at the last second and I didn't want to be the 10,000th person wearing a Squid Games costume. You guys remember that? Yeah, it was 2020. Pretty crazy to think about that. So we ended up going to Fifth Ave in Royal Oak, which if any of you know, it's pretty much a cesspool where people that think they're better than everyone else go. It's a club bar type joint. And I mean, everyone that goes, it's like, yeah, dude, it's so sick. Like, this, this place is great. You won't believe it. It's not. It's really nothing special. There's two floors. Okay, that's great. But nothing really exciting about it, I'd say. So I went with a buddy of mine. And the whole plan was we were going to go there, we Ubered, and then we were going to go back to his parents' place and stay the night. Uh, it got to the point where that friend of mine got a little too silly, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, he was looking like a skunk, not his costume, and I had to pretty much play a babysitter. So it was not a burglar, it was babysitting. Uh, I eventually stopped him, I think the cutoff point was $300 on drinks for a stranger that looked at him while his mouth was on the floor. But we got out of there, it was great. Eventually, night comes to a close, I have to run upstairs, skip the line, and say, sorry, I'm looking for my friend that probably doesn't know his first name, and I was right. We grabbed him, got out, and then, of course, we pull up our phone, go on the old Uber app, $100. Now, I am not frugal or cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm not paying $100 for some stranger to drive me home. Just not going to happen. So here's a little bit of info you guys can get out of this. If you don't laugh at all, you'll at least learn from this set. <laughs> so the Uber algorithm works based on hot spots and where people are calling. So if everyone's in the same spot calling an Uber, that's how you get like the surcharge and all that stuff. So if you want to mitigate that, you have to walk away from the hot spot and just walk towards the general direction of your you know, final destination. So we decided to do that, and we ended up at a BP, lovely gas station chain, one of nature's favorite oil brands, and <laughs> it was good. It was great, except for you know, the classic gas station. Sorry, no public restroom. I'm fine at this point, but I'm like, my buddy, you know, he probably has to go. Like, we, gotta, we gotta get out of here. So we pulled the Uber up, $69. That's not a joke. It's very nice, but it was $69. I'm like, okay, I can pay that. Put that between the two of us, we'll be good. So I'm sitting outside, minding my own business, waiting for this Uber to arrive. And, you know, I'm just like, okay, you know, no one's here. I don't have to impress anyone. So I let, let one go. And immediately, I knew something was wrong. My conscience is like, hey, Greg, um, I know we don't talk a lot, but <laughs> there's something wrong with what you just did. And I could tell from the smell that something was indeed wrong, and it was a little shifty. But I'm like, no, there's no way this can't happen to me. I have the best costume of the night. It was you know, all, be all black, except the ski mask I was wearing was bright red. So it wasn't like a real, you know, like I wasn't going to rob a bank. I just looked like a GTA, like, creative character that <laughs> someone just threw together at the last second. Because that's what the costume was, thrown together at the last second. So we get in the Uber, we go home, no big deal. Uh, my buddy, of course, after forgetting his name, spending a stupid amount of money on drinks, decided uh, to forget his garage door passcode. He has lived there for his entire life, 
And it's like, I don't know the code. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know the code? It's like, I don't know it. Like, how do you not know? You live, this is your house. He's like, dude, I've tried everything. I don't know it. Like, there's no way you've tried everything. It's your house. It's your code. How do you not know it? I can't get it, man. Thank God I just did, you know, a quick search in my messages to find it. Because I don't delete my messages. Which, sidebar, people that delete their messages are not to be trusted. And if you're one of those people, reevaluate your life. And if you know one of those people, keep an open eye and ear on them. Because they're hiding something. Especially if they give you some BS, like, oh, it's good, you know, I have low data. Low data. I don't have a lot of storage. You can have like a million text messages and it's one kilobyte. There's nothing you're saving on your phone from deleting text messages. You're just trying to cover up what could be a crime. <laughs> I find the code, we get in, he goes to bed on the couch for some reason. Well, I mean, some reason. We all know why at this point. I mean, come on, I have to spell it out for you. And I'm like, I should go to the bathroom. So, you know, I go to the bathroom and I'm sitting down. Because I'm a sitter. You know, whether I'm going one or two, I like to sit. I like to have a nice newspaper, you know, maybe read, catch up on my text, my email. No one should be rushed when they're doing their business. And you know, I'm just, sitting there, they got the mirror, you know, full mirror right across, so I'm looking out, I'm like, all right, like, we're gonna do this. I look down, and there it is. I, uh, I shit myself. I, in fact, sharded. And that's in, at that point, I'm like, all right. I look back up at the mirror, and the man looking back at me is weeping. <laughs> it's not the same man I am. I've never seen someone give me a more disappointed and disgusted look before that wasn't my parents. <laughs> so immediately, shoes off, shirt off, glasses off, socks off, pants off, underwear off, belt off. Don't ask how the belt came off last. <laughs> and I just, you know, immediately to the sink, clean it up. It's a nice little, you know, sink. Sink cleanup. There's no shower in that bathroom. It's the you know main floor of restroom. What is this? Beverly Hills? I mean, come on. <laughs> I get cleaned up, I walk out. I'm like, alright, he's asleep on the couch, and I can't go outside to throw my underwear out. Or even put it in like the garage because I know if I do, it'll set the alarm off. And I'm like I'm not going to wake up my buddy and his parents and have to explain to them at 3 in the morning on Halloween. Yeah, sorry, I actually sharded uh, before we got here, and I have to, you know, fix this. So, sorry, I was just trying to get to the trash can outside. No, it was not going to work like that. So, I, you know, go over to the kitchen and do what any, you know, smart person would do, and I just throw them out in the kitchen, you know, trash can. Like, that's the most used one. It's going to get replaced the earliest. And if they're like, oh, it smells, like, oh, you know, maybe you should have washed the disposal, or, you know, oh, you must have left, like, food out. Like, that's what it is. Or, there must be a leak under the sink. It's not me. It's just clearly a leak under the sink. So, at that point, the evidence is disposed of. And I have to figure out what I'm going to do because I know better than to put jeans back on while going commando. Let's just say, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I had one encounter where the zipper got a little feisty with me. And it was probably the most pain I've ever been in in my entire life. So at this point, I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, obviously, if I have to find a clean pair of you know, underwear basketball shorts or something, I'm going to have to go upstairs. So, you know, I'm just like going like, like this, up the stairs, trying to hide. And I'm like, alright. His parents' bedroom is right across from his. The door's closed. If this opens, they're just going to get full frontal with me in their house 3 a.m. And I don't want to do that. One, because I don't want to not be invited back ever again. And two, it's like nowadays, like, you should make people pay for that. Like, that's what OnlyFans is for. Like, I'm going to start one of those before I have my buddy's parents get, you know, a free, you know, try before you buy in their hallway. So I go over to his room, and I'm like, I can't turn the light on. Like, I'm going to be worried they're going to hear the click. Like, I'm just freaking out. They're going to see the light. Like, I'll just use my phone light. Boom. Of course, where's my phone? In my pants. Which the jeans were fine, by the way. There was no poop in the jeans. The jeans were completely fine. They made it uh, safe and sound. 
which was nice because I have like two pairs of jeans and just wear them a lot. Because you know it's denim. Denim can take it. Now, can denim take poop? That is not something I know and not something I would like to find out. So I started rummaging through his room. I'm like on my hands and knees. It's like when Velma loses her glasses. That's how blind I am at this point. I have no idea what I'm grabbing, what I'm reaching for, where I am. All sense of direction out the window. By the grace of God, I find a nice folded pair of clothes. I'm like, oh, this has got to be laundry. God bless his mom. Let's get into this. Just start throwing stuff, feeling around, and then eventually you get to like, oh, are these shorts? No, it was a very long pair of underwear, but underwear nonetheless. So I tossed them on, went downstairs, went to sleep. Nothing ever happened. Nothing came of it. It was great. Until he came over and asked, and I gave it back to him. He goes, uh, what? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, this is my favorite pair of underwear. First of all, uh, am I the only one that thinks it's a little out there for having a favorite pair of underwear? I mean, I don't know. I could be in a minority there, but I don't think that's completely normal by any stretch of the imagination. He's like, I've been looking everywhere for these for like a month. How do you have them? And I had to explain the same story I just explained to all you guys. And he's like, dude, what the hell? Why? He's like, we're... Was there poop in these? I'm like, no, no. I, I washed up. I was completely washed. And then they were put through the laundry at my house also. Not by me, because I live with my mom. And she did the laundry. She's like, when did you get a new pair of underwear? I'm like, don't ask questions about my underwear. It's weird. I'm 27. That's way out of, you know, we're way past that. No, that's great. I love living at home. Living at home is, uh, it's cool. It's, you know, like we're being a police officer for Halloween, there's pros and cons. Pros being I don't have to pay rent, but I also don't make any money, so it kind of just like buries out there and it's, don't really gain anything from it. Uh, a negative, though, is I realize that every human being has something very similar to uh, professional baseball pitchers. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but they say every arm only has so many pitches. So every guy wants to be able to, you know, pitch his best and then quit on his terms, you know, be done, retire, whatever, rather than be out there just giving it his all when clearly he's not going to be able to throw at the same level he used to. Uh, for us, that is how was your days. You only have so many of those in your life before it's just off the rails. And it's crazy, you know, you start so high on that as a kid when you come home from school. Oh, hey, honey, how was your day? Oh, it was great. I learned about rocks and science class, and I learned about this, and, you know, Jimmy and I were hanging out. It was, it was awesome. Then, you know, you become a teenager, and for some reason you're like, I cannot tell my parents anything I do, or it's going to make me love school and school. I really don't know. So it's, hey, honey, how was your day? Good. Okay. It's like you're not being interrogated by the CIA. You're completely okay to share what happened. For some reason, you're like, I don't want to do it. It's not me. Then after that, you pretty much should be done. You know, you move out. But if you don't move out, then you have some, and it's like a weird limbo. Hey, how was your day? Uh, good. I think I went to work. Next day, it's the same answer. And then it's the same answer. And it's the same answer. And then Friday, it's the same answer. And Saturday, I mean, no one asks how your day was on Saturday, let's be honest. Everyone's hopefully doing something. Or at least my mom is always doing something where she never asked me how my day was. <laughs> Then you get to the point where, once you make it past that, you start being there. You're there physically, but mentally you are gone. You're long gone. You should have retired a couple of seasons ago, uh, hung it up while you still had it. People are starting to murmur that you know, you're not as good as you used to be. Because, you know, how was your day? And all you hear is, like, when the adults are talking in the peanuts. It's like, wah, 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 and you're just, you're miserable. And then you can even get to the point where that's how you talk to the person who's tuned in. They're like, nothing you said makes sense. And finally, if you are pushed past your limits, 
it just gets going like, hey, how was your day? And you just reach your hands out and you just grab them right, right by the neck and you say, listen, every day is the same. I'm just trying to get through it. I'm trying to process it. I don't even know what I did today. Stop asking me what I did. My day was, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. None of this matters. Nothing that we do matters. Leave me alone. I'm going to my room, Mom. So a little bit of that, you know, everything ties back. But no, it was, uh, it's fantastic. I think about what, you know, what I would gain from possibly moving out. I'm trying to become a homeowner. No, you guys don't have to clap for that. I'm glad to know that you're all the people keeping the working man down from progressing in life. So that's really good to know. It's really good to know. Yeah, so I'm trying to become a homeowner. Yeah. Oh my God, it's like pulling teeth. I'm not even dressed up as a dentist. And I'm trying to figure out like the pros and cons of that. Like pros, I can paint a bedroom purple and be like, oh yeah, this is everything I wanted it to be and more. And then like I guess separation from my mom, which means I'm now making my own dinner, doing my own laundry. But I'm not having anyone ask me how my day was. So that's, you know, that's all right. And then, you know, probably another pro is, like, I can have people over whenever I want, but I'm an adult. I can pretty much do that anyway. It's not like we're committing crime at this point. I'm not a teenager. Like, oh, as soon as the home's open, everyone and their mom has to come over just so we can see how many people we can fit in this amount of square footage. I think it'd be nice to live on my own so I could have all the women I don't talk to over. That'd be really nice, I just think. Um, I actually just deleted Tinder. You guys are good to clap for that one too, if you'd like. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, not because I was getting zero play whatsoever, but because I just felt like it was a dehumanizing experience. Like, I'm more than a picture and a bio I had someone else write for me. I am, I'm a young know, person, you know, I'm 5'8", explosive, uh, maybe the build's a little bit below average, I've been drinking a lot, but that's what happens when you live at home. But you know, my mom says I'm a catch, and that's another thing I'm going to miss if we do separate and I have to move out. Like, I'm not going to have that reassurance, you know, if I don't have to make it through a how was your day, it's all, oh, you know, you'll be alright at 27 living in, with, at home. Okay, good. Glad to know that, Mom. That's really good. <sighs> Tinder, you know, people always ask, like, why Tinder? It's like, that's the gross one. I'm like, okay, like, this is news to me. I thought they were all the same. Um, well, I used Tinder because it was the easiest for me. Uh, I definitely wasn't going to use Bumble, which for any of you that are in a healthy relationship uh, over the age of 40, or know how to socialize with people in person wouldn't know, let me explain it to you. Bumble is an app where once you match with a woman, the woman has 24 hours to start the conversation. There's nothing you can do besides, you know, swiping on her. If she swipes on you, then you're locked in. And it is just the most intense, suspenseful battle of your life. It's knowing, is this woman going to talk to me within 24 hours? It's kind of like diffusing a bomb. You're like, at what point does this timer hit zero and everything's gone? You lose it. You never get a chance to talk to that person on the app again, unless you delete and make a new account, which I've never done. That would be so out of character for someone like me. But it's completely gone. It's just kaput. It's like all those messages your friend deletes from their phone, gone. You're never getting those back, and you start to wonder why. However, thankfully, Bumble knows that, you know, sometimes people are busy. You know, sometimes you have to go do a uh, comedy set at a nice coffee shop on a man's birthday in downtown Farmington. But, you know, it's all right. Sometimes people aren't doing that. So they give men the 24-hour uh, extend, which means you get one, unless you pay for it, which I've never paid for Bumble. I will not admit what apps I've paid for, but I can guarantee you I have not paid for Bumble. And basically, it's like a, it's like a, you save it. 
So if I were to match with woman A, woman A for some reason doesn't want to message me within 24 hours. She's busy. That's it. She's busy. She's got a lot going on. You know, I read her bio. She's a re got a really esteemed job. It's, you know, she's a school teacher. It's a Saturday. Like she's busy. She's obviously at work. She's at work. She's at work. Come on. She's not. She's not going to not message me. I can hit extend and I get a bonus 24 hours on that timer. So I pretty much did defuse the bomb except I did a half-assed job because it is now ticking again, but for a different point in time. Yeah, so on Bumble, I think I used every single extend I ever had, and I never had anyone actually message me off them. So that was kind of rough, but I'm like, all right, whatever, it's not for me. That's why they make plenty, plenty of apps. So I moved to Hinge for a little bit. Now, for those of you that don't know, Hinge's tagline is the app that's meant to be deleted. So they think, like, you're going to find a serious relationship based on the algorithm, and you will be fine, you'll be set for life. Like, marriage, kids, house, maybe a nicer car than you have right now, and probably a dog and a cat if you're lucky. <laughs> I don't like Hinge. I feel like Robert Downey Jr., when I go on Hinge. And if you know where this is going, I'm sorry because this is going to validate in your mind that I am not a good person. I'm just <laughs> my imagination. I'm just not. I'm going to be honest. I'm a product of my environment. It wasn't good. And I still live there. So I'm only getting worse. So I go on there, and you know the reason I feel like I'm RDJ is because you know when you're well known, people expect you to do charitable acts, and you know it's kind of like, oh, you can't be that rich and you know not serve the community or help someone or put a smile on someone's face. And they're right because when I go on Hinge, I feel like I'm looking at all the people that have made their make a wish wish be to meet me. <laughs> It is rough here in Metro Detroit. And I don't know where we want to call the boundaries for that. Uh, you know, I had a guy from Lansing be like, yeah, I'm from Lansing, Metro Detroit. I'm like, that's not that. <laughs> so I know that they just keep extending it. You know, I'm from Livonia, not a very big town, but it's pretty, it's pretty bad. You know, the women that went on there went on there knowing, they're like, oh, I had a slight cough. And then the next day they wake up, they're in a hospital bed, and all the Avengers are there. And they're like, hey, sweetie. It's like, oh, God. And I just can't do it. I just can't do it. You know, my mom says I'm a catch. So there's no reason I should be stooping these levels. Because I, I feel bad. I feel like it'd be like, I wouldn't be able to do it. I just wouldn't be able to do it. I'd feel so bad. Granted, you know, it'd be nice to feel like famous, but I don't know if I'm going to go on a date with these women that look the way they do or they just have their bios. Like, again, you know, I'm not really anything crazy, you know. I've been told I'm a Midwest five and a half. That's out of ten, and I'll take that. I'll take that. That's the best passing in some places over the 50 percentile. But I just can't do it. There's just absolutely no way. I can't believe that like someone would sign up for that just the way it is. It's like, there's nothing I can do, you know? That's a conversation that the person signing up for Hinge needs to have with the man upstairs. That's not between me and them. That's for them and the maker. Because he spends more time on some than he does on others. I will have you interpret that however you would like. So the only place I could find me that makes me feel like I'm famous and, you know, granting a make-a-wish is Apothecary Coffee. So that's it for me. I'm so glad everyone's here. Uh, thanks for coming out.